Though the Favist style began in 1900, beginning in 1904 was the Favist movement, which was a very short-lived art movement. Its previous forms seemed to be very restrictive to some artists. However, in the early 20th century, it was recognized as one of the first, most expressive art forms. Favism was a very liberating movement. It opened a new approach to color and painting. Its use of brushstrokes and sheer wildness brought a new form of energy to the table. Its main focus or result gave the audience a new state of mind. It twisted, blended, and bended regular dimensions into a blur of color. Use of color was more important than conveying realistic ideas. The works were a celebration of life, showing landscapes, cities, and regular people doing everyday things. Favism was a product of French culture and expressionistic ideas, mainly from Germany. And while expressionism may be considered a mode of Favism, the two styles have many contrasting ideas. The subject of the works were usually very simple, and yet also very abstract. Many artists are associated with this movement, but among the most known and prominent are Henri Matisse, André de Rennes, and Maurice de Vlaminique. With these artists, the movement began and ended, and Vin Vincent van Gogh seemed to be among some of the few great inspirations of the artists. After having their extremely colorful artwork viewed at a show among other lesser-known favists, Salon de Autumn, in 1905, Art critic Louis Vossel coined this art group Les Fauves, meaning the wild beast. After this term was printed in newspapers on October 17, 1905, it became very popular in usage. The Fauves sought to emphasize mood, subjects, emotions, and convey strong symbolization through color and abstractness. Many became amused and excited by their exaggerated art color, and thus began the Fauvism movement. Woman with Hat, painted in 1905, is actually a painting of Madame Matisse. This was a painting that transitioned Matisse's style from organized brushstrokes in his early works to a more individualized expressive style. Matisse used bright colors and long brushstrokes to give the portrait a more of a sketch look. The portrait of Madame Matisse has her seated, looking out at the viewer, and wearing a huge feathered hat that was the fashion at the time. There is an amazing palette of colors in this portrait, ranging from the vivid red and blue hair, to the red, yellow, and green background, to the bright blue dress and hat. It was actually because of this brilliant colored favism earned its name and started the art movement when it debuted in the 1905 Salon d'Auton. Portrait with Green Stripe, painted in 1905, is another portrait of Madame Matisse that came a few months after Woman with Hat. It also has her seated looking out at the viewer. As you can see, the painting gets its name from the bright green stripe down Madame Matisse's face that almost separates the painting into two halves. There is a noticeable contrast of colors between the darker background colors on the left side compared to the warmer and brighter colors on the right side of her face. The two halves one with bright pink, orange, and red, and the other with bright blue and green, is separated by a vivid green stripe, which almost gives the painting a 3D effect. It gives the painting light and depth, and at the same time helps the face stand out against the brilliant colored background. 
painting also has more noticeable layered brush strokes, especially in the hair and face, which helps emphasize the contrasting colors on either side. Signax Terrace at St. Tropez, painted in 1904, is one of Matisse's lighter color paintings. It has Madame Matisse sitting on the steps in a Japanese kimono, hunched over. This almost makes the painting look secretive, like she is trying to hide something. This contrasts greatly with Matisse's use of bright greens and blues in the flowers and house to light pastels in the sky and terrace. The bright, almost neon green and blue in the door, windows, and fence, and flowers, how make the painting stand out and makes the objects stand out against their background. The bright sunlight shining out directly on the terrace gives the painting an almost spiritual feel. Aside from painting, Matisse also enjoyed making quick, rough sketches as seen in Signac Fishing and Durain Swimming, drawn in 1904. This picture overlooks the sea, with a fisherman down by the rocks and Durain out swimming. There are boats sailing in the distance and the shore is to the right. Matisse often used sketches such as these to draw inspiration from on later paintings and sculptures. This sketch is made up of quick, short dashes that tell us it was drawn spontaneously to capture his surroundings. It was a quick sketch that captured the form and the emotion of the moment. These sketches were only the beginning of a great masterpiece. Open Window Coulier was painted in the summer of 1905 when Matisse worked with Drain near the Spanish border. The light-filled picture has brightly colored blue boats floating on pink waves below a blue, pink, and purple sky. This makes the picture very vibrant and peaceful. From the light pink window shutters to the bright blue dashes in the sky, this painting has a lot of cool soft colors, contrasting bright loud ones to make the painting seem inviting on a warm summer's day. This painting has a variety of brush strokes, from long blended marks to short random points. They represent the part of the painting. The variety of brush strokes paired with the vivid color seen in this picture illustrate the basic techniques used by Favis. Sketch for the Joy of Life, painted in 1905, is the very embodiment of Favism, and it holds the key to the style of Matisse's later works. It is the final version of the Joy of Life, with different art movements affecting its look. In style, the painting has hints of pointillism and neo-impressionistic qualities, due to the spots of color that create a carefree and lively scene. In this painting, there are many people 
all nude, who are relaxing and enjoying the day. The color in this painting varies a lot, ranging from very light, almost pastel yellows, purples and greens, to vivid reds, oranges and blues. There is a great contrast of color, and Matisse's way of outlining the trees and people with reds and blues make the figures pop. Matisse was trying to express that people living harmoniously on a peaceful day brings out the joy of life. This painting stands out as the first masterwork of the 20th century because it fascinated and dazzled everyone who saw it. Andre Durain completed the landscape near Jatu in 1904. This painting was one of his first Fauvistic works and kicked off the Fauvism era in his perspective. He uses oils to paint the cottages and farmhouses of Jatu with hot colors that complement each other very well. The idea is the painting is the sum of all the marks which you can clearly see in the fields and in the river. Their goal is not to paint a mere image of life or nature, but rather to show places with a collection of brisk marks and blends of colors. For example, the sky in this painting varies from a warm, rosy color to a peachy color. It is not the norm for a mixture of colors in a sunset. The next painting is quite similar to this one, and it even has the same name. It's one of Durain's earlier works that was post-impressionism, which we are going to show for comparison only. As you can see, the colors are not as bright and hot as the colors used in the previous Fauvistic one. The lines are also more defined and clear. As for the other one, it had a bunch of rough marks that formed the landscape. Music. In this painting, intricate details are not necessary to show the flow of emotions that we feel when we hear music. The nude men and women are not clothed because they are not the center of attention. They're white and bland. The focus is on their emotions surrounding them. Red may represent lust or love. So may yellow, as you can see it surrounds the man on the floor. Blue might symbolize happiness, as it is around the people dancing. Boats at Mkolia in this painting, you can clearly see Durain paints the water as he sees it. It's mostly blue, but also has a few hints of red, yellow, and green throughout it. The people at the bottom of this painting kind of fade into the background and blend into the shore. Durain may have used another style called pointillism along with Fauvism in this painting. Portrait of Matisse. In this painting, Durain shows his perception of Henry Matisse. You can see the brisk marks that make up his beard and hair. The color scheme of the faded yellow and green set the tune for the portrait. His shirt starts out as purple and turns to blue as if showing there is a shadow on the left side of his face when you're looking at him. You can see his right side seems to be facing a light source. The Bridge View on the River This painting of the landscape, I believe, was taken on a boat on the river. The bright yellow, red, and pink, rough, slash, broken up marks of the sunlight match the blue, turquoise, and green marks of the river. Once again, Durain seems to be using some pointillism with Fauvism, his main style. You can see the bridge is blended and defined, though, unlike the rest of the painting. The buildings on the left have many hints of pink marks to symbolize the sunlight bouncing off them, or it could be the lights of the city. Turn Cross Bridge. This painting is a closer view of the bridge in the previous painting. The hot colors all contrast with each other, just like in the rest of the paintings we have shown. Effect of Sun on the Water, London. In this painting, Durain shows the sunlight on the water seeming to create a path. I believe he is trying to show that we try to hide certain emotions, but they always crack through. The dark blue clouds represent our walls, and so does the greenish blue water. The red and yellow sky and sunlight on the water represent our hidden emotions. Um, so basically, I'm here to tell you how to use your color compositions to make your faux painting in a portraiture style look more effective. 
um, basically once you, when you understood color theory as explained before um, you see the cool colors you could just easily contrast them with hot colors um, you could mesh it up a bit by adding a little yellow make it as bright as possible um, at the same time when you're when you choose your color to complement the cool color with this big blob here what you need to do is cool it off with little blue make that blue a bit lighter and a white but don't go to the extent where it reaches the blue here because right there then you gotta use a different hotter color and that's where we add red right about here you can use different um, cool colors to complement your hot colors um, again you could just use green here And maybe we'll add a little more yellow around here. And possibly even around the sides here. Now you can immediately see how bright the painting looks now um, minus the realisticness of it I think it looks pretty great now you don't necessarily have to repeat um, the cool and warm color complemented all the time uh, the same brightness effect can be created around here as well where you use another sister hot color with your primary color over here which is red with orange or yellow with orange or is that red? I don't really know um, but you know be creative um, but also limit yourself to a few like a handful of hot colors and a handful of cool colors just don't go overboard otherwise it'll look like a rainbowy kind of bleh effect and basically throughout the whole process you will end up like this Lom a la pipe, also known as man smoking a pipe, in 1900 is one of the first, if not the first, known pieces that are associated with Maurice de Blamenick's Favis style. As many of Maurice de Blamenick's works are, it is also a piece that seems to be obviously very heavily inspired by artist Van Gogh, specifically the etching Portrait of Dr. Gachet with Pipe, which was made in 1890, just 10 years after this art. The contrasting light and dark colors on either side of the man in the piece are obviously not a mistake and seems to give the viewer of the work a description about the personality of the subject of the piece. It truly portrays the broad slashing strokes associated with Fauvism, as does it show the portrayal of ordinary people. This is one of the many pieces that Blamenick would create of portraits of people with pipes. The portrait, Sir Le Zinc, or At the Bar, made in 1900, portrays a woman, solitary, at a bar with a cigarette hanging from her mouth. In this painting, Maurice de Blamenick uses contrasting color once again to convey feelings of loneliness. Though she seems to be vibrant in her clothing, the colors surrounding her are very dark. She is surrounded by loneliness. Maurice de Blamenick is also playing with the idea of prostitution by painting a deep red flower pinned to her more than adequate sized bosom. The usage of red on her nose, in her drink, the color of her lips, 
and the rose pinned to her dress, is also thought to have been used to convey ideas of addiction. Rosacea is linked to alcoholism. Once again, the ideas of fauvism and everyday life occur in this painting. Les Rames Yeux de Pomme de Terre, also known as The Potato Pickers, is a later and very well-known piece by Maurice de Vlaminick in the Fauvist community. It is a landscape painting which shows workers in a field picking potatoes, and while artist Van Gogh's inspiration is very evident, once again, Vlaminick's use of curving strokes pushes it a bit more. He makes nature bend to his will, turning it into fireworks of color. With vague outline, it comes close to being hard to make out many of the figures in the piece. This piece was constructed in 1905 and shows just how far Vlaminick was really willing to go to break conventional ideas, which are more concerned with art being more figural. The girl at Ratmort, constructed in 1905, shows a young woman with an exposed breast. It is very obviously associated with the piece, The Girl from Ratmort, which is another piece by Maurice de Vlaminick, which shows a very nude woman in the same background as the aforementioned piece. The bright and lively background seems to contrast the over-sexual and overly sensual and seemingly detached emotion conveyed by the subject of this piece, and it is easy to assume that prostitution is implied in this piece, as the girl seems to be in a very unsightly manner, and she does not seem to have money, though her hat would suggest otherwise. The color red is also very prominent in this painting, and could suggest a lot of things, but mainly, specifically, and most obviously, sexuality. Still Life with Pitcher and Fruit, made in 1900, but completed in 1906, is probably one of Vlaminick's most seemingly ordinary pieces. Maurice of Vlaminick's piece shows a pitcher placed on a table, alongside a lemon and an apple. It is probably meant to not show more than the ordinariness of life. Its simplicity, yet broad brushstrokes, give way to the Fava style, while not leaving behind the ideas and feelings of everyday life. The use of wild color is not forgotten, and though many of the colors in the work are primary, it still seems to give off a feeling of wildness to the audience. White Sailboat at Chateau is one of Maurice de Lamennick's many landscape Favism pieces. It simply shows a couple on a sailboat in the river. Though this piece once again wills to show ordinary daily life, and its use of colors are not too far-fetched, nature does seem to be absorbed by the giant brushstrokes used by Vlaminic. The sky and the sea seem to become one, and if not for the reflection of the sailboat, one would not be able to tell the difference between them at all. There even seems to be a reflection of the sailboat in the sky, and all of the colors seem to be reflections of each other, as there really is only use of the colors red, blue, green, white, and yellow. This piece was completed in 1907. The Orchard, completed in 1905, is a piece which shows, obviously, Maurice de Vlaminick's experimentation with color. In this, he chooses not to be a slave to nature, making trees purple, the grass yellow, red, and orange, and the sky green. If flipped, this picture would make for a much more sensible landscape, the sun being at the top, the grass being at the bottom. But Maurice de Vlaminick takes the Favis approach to this piece and bends nature at his will, making this orchard seem more exotic and exciting than possible. The use of the color black almost invites danger, while excitement really is the main focus of this painting. One of Maurice de Vlaminick's more friendly pieces would probably be the portrait of Durain. It is an extreme close-up of artist friend and fellow fav, André Durain. His body is traced in big black strokes, and the portrait of his face seems to be floating around in bright yellow space. The face of Durain is very red, and great attention is brought to his nose in this piece with a patch of green painted on it. The mustache and eyelids of Durain are both blue, so it is more than likely that the use of color either shows Durain's personality or how Vlaminick felt toward him. 
This piece was created in 1906 and belonged to Durain until his death in 1954. Though the Fauvism movement did not go out with a bang, and ended quite discreetly, with many of its supporting artists, including and especially Henri Matisse, venturing off into new and different things, the movement quietly disappeared in 1908. However, the style continued well beyond 1910. The movement brought about new ideas of what art should, could, and would be like in the future, and opened doors for more artists to become more experimental with color and other aspects of art.